Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, continuing with our guide for complete beginners here in 2022 with our Minotaur Berserker. This is episode four. We're seventh level. We're on the third dungeon level, and we just took out some really tough enemies and survived by the skin of our Minotaur teeth. And let's keep it rolling. So I'm going to push O to auto explore. And we immediately open a door and get blasted by a sling from a goblin. And we see a ball python. So in this room right here, there are two enemies. But look over here. They are both showing up as gray on the threat meter. And, you know, as you play the game, it's going to become second nature. You're just going to know after dying a million times in this. Uh, okay, Goblin is generally easy, Ball Python pretty easy, uh, especially at this stage for these this character. All right, so we're going to just step back into this hallway, push S, let the Python come to us. It dies. We just push... Uh, this guy has a sling, unfortunately, so I don't know if he's going to want to come... Yeah, he's going to try to shoot us. So we'll move to range, and you can see when we get into range with him, he unwielded his sling and and pulled out a club so he can bash us in melee with the club instead of the sling now that does take time for him to do that um, it used to take something like half of a turn to switch weapons i'm not sure if it's a full turn but it's within that range so even if you're doing it like if you're switching from a ranged weapon to a melee weapon just understand that that does take time and people can get a hit in potentially in that window uh, but what that allowed us to do is to walk up and not get hit. So we just smack him in the face with the axe and the guy's gone. All right. And there is a, another hunting sling. Now, I'm actually going to pick this up. I have no real plan of using a hunting sling, but um, I could. Now, let me show you something about that. So in my inventory, you'll see that I have... Uh, my hand axe, the plus four short sword, and the hunting sling as hand weapons that are up top. Now, something I could do if I really, really wanted, okay, um, would be to do this. I would go into push I for inventory, and I would go on to the hunting sling, okay, and I would select it. And then down here at the bottom with these options, I would either push the equals key or click adjust, Okay, and it says adjust to which letter in the lower left. All right, and what we're gonna do is just push B, lowercase b, okay? And it swapped um, the, the animal skin that we had from B to H. And now if I push inventory, you'll see that my hand axe is assigned to A and my hunting sling is assigned to B, okay? So this, the reason I did that is uh, for this reason. And by the way, it assigns these letters uh, based on the order in which you acquire stuff in the game. So hand axe, we started with it. Animal skin, we started with it. So those were A and B. Anyway, um, if you push the uh, single quotation mark key or the apostrophe key, that is uh, right one key left of the enter key on my keyboard anyway, uh, you will switch between what is equipped or assigned rather to slot A and what is assigned to the letter B. So I have my sling assigned to B and you can see right here uh, on the panel in the upper right, it's saying B is your hunting sling. And if I push the um, single quotation mark key again, it'll go to A and hand axe. And I can just push that um, and yes, it still does take half a turn. Here you go. You can see up here. Um, and let me explain that again. If I, I had I told you guys this in an earlier video, but just again, the time is how much time in turns has passed since you started the game. And over here, where it says 0.5 in, per, in parentheses, that is telling you how much time based on turns the last action that you did took. So if I move you'll see that it goes to one because I move one tile in one turn. But if I switch my weapon with the apostrophe or single quotation mark key, I'm just going to keep calling it the wrong thing, but I hope you understand which one I mean. Uh, this, 
uh, the key to the upper left of, of shift and to the left immediately of enter. Uh, and now it takes half of a turn to do that, okay? And this is very convenient if you want to shoot with your sling, okay? Like, so if I want to now fire with my sling, um, you'll notice that um, if I'm using my axe, okay, the quiver command is showing throw. So if I push F, like, it'll say, hey, where do you want to throw this stone? And it'll say throw throw 28 stones and I can throw it okay and it'll give me this like yellow area that I can move around with the arrow keys or the mouse and then I can push F again to shoot my projectile over there but I can also push the single quote and go to fire and then if I push F you'll see that the verb for the action that I'm taking has changed from throw to fire because I'm actually going to fire this stone out of my sling so slings use stones as bullets bows use uh, arrows um, and uh, crossbows use bolts okay so you need to get the appropriate type of ammunition for whatever uh, ranged weapon you're using but now I can just fire it and it will do more damage than if I'm throwing it all right and it will use this skill slings to determine uh, its two hit and damage or to like boost that up versus throwing and the reason that that's important um in some case for a minotaur would be that i have a plus one aptitude to training slings if i wanted to i don't really want to right now i don't recommend training um any ranged attack with your um minotaur berserker at, to start the game unless you get some like prohibitively awesome ranged weapon but even then don't go too far with it just like just a little bit if you want but i really recommend your melee weapon being your primary focus so now we can shoot and we can switch weapons like that so this allows you to as long as your main weapon is assigned to a and your main ranged weapon is assigned to b you can use the single quote key to switch between them without having to go to this screen um and do that if you want to do it the long way of course you can just push w okay for wield and then you can be like i'm going to change to my sling and it does the same thing or i want to change to my axe okay and you can do it that way without rebinding the keys or if you have more weapons you want to rotate between that's fine too it's just a little bit quicker to push the single quote key all right so now i'm going to keep exploring and we found some arrows uh, by the way ammunition is like set to not automatically pick up in unless you get a weapon of that type and you tell the game that you want to pick it up so if i went over to those arrows and i picked them up by pushing the g key to to get them off the ground then all arrows i would see for the rest of the game would be on auto pickup okay and then i would just automatically start amassing them now really there's nothing wrong with doing that for the most part because in terms of your inventory there's no like uh weight to what you're carrying around you can carry around as like you could have a thousand arrows and that's fine the only thing that it does is it takes up a slot in your inventory so there's no weight to your inventory but there are slots so you can see right here i have 16 of the 52 slots available filled and at the beginning of the game th that's like no problem but honestly when you get further you will just have all of this filled like you'll have so many scrolls and potions and things that these will be filled and it, you will be competing for space of course i could just drop this sword i can drop you know the animal skin and the leather armor to clear up space and things like that when it becomes an issue the ring of ice i'm not going to use that uh, and the nice thing again about dropping stuff in this game is that it just sits on the ground forever and you can it, it never goes away and you can always go back and get it now, it used to be the case sometimes uh, with weapons that if you would drop a weapon, if an enemy came around and it had hands and it could pick it up, it might take it and start using it. Um, so drop your weapons on a floor that you've cleared. I don't know if they've changed that, but that used to be the case. I think it still is. So just I always just make sure I drop weapons that I think are powerful on floors that i've cleared out so no enemy can like just go get it and kill me with my own sword because that's embarrassing now if i was talking about auto pickup and you know the the arrows and stuff like that if you have told the game to pick up stones or arrows but then you're like you know what i'm actually not using these anymore i don't want you to pick it up at any time you can push 
the, um, I think it's the forward slash key, the one that's right above the enter key. And it will open up this screen called recognized items. And from here, um, it's, it's kind of cool because what this does will tell you like all of the items that you know. So like these are all of the potions that you know. It gives them a rarity, all of the scrolls that you know and stuff like that. Um, but you can also uh, use this screen, okay? and push the minus key to go to unrecognized and see what rings, jewelry, wands, all right, scrolls, potions that you haven't found yet, all right? Um, and then you can go to a, on the recognized item list, I could go to arrows and you can um, push the letter for arrows, which is N, and then toggle auto pickup on or off. So this, so I could tell the game, hey, you know what? Um, let's just say I don't want to pick up, uh, rings of ice ever again. So I just push C and I change the plus sign next to ring of ice from, you know, like auto pick up to don't pick up, or you can click it with the mouse and I don't ever want to pick up one again. So I'm just going to be like, I don't want to pick that up. All right. So you can manage what you automatically pick up. I recommend you automatically pick up manuals, gold. Uh, we don't need spell books because you know, uh, I also recommend, and I'm going to turn this on for myself, um, I would like, with this character, I would like to pick up lightning rods, phantom mirrors, condenser veins, boxes of beasts, files of floods, uh, and tins of tremor stones. I don't want Zom's chessboard pieces. So these are like evocable items that you can pick up that could be helpful. Throwing nets are set to auto pickup, which I do want. And by the way, you can fire both stones and sling bullets from a sling. Sling bullets are slightly better than stones. Um, so they're just strictly better to use. If you can, they're just generally more limited. Uh, and you can also throw boomerangs and darts and javelins, uh, which obviously don't require a weapon. They are the weapon, so they're ammo and weapon in one. Uh, and I'm okay with everything else that I see right here. So I'm going to push escape and get out of this, and let's keep looking around. All right, and so we found a room that is kind of like a uh, god vault, uh, just because there's two altars here for worshiping gods. Uh, if we were interested, and these are very opposed gods, uh, this guy is hitting us with his reach weapon, so we need to get into him. And oh, so he had, like, interesting. I'm going to push, look at this. He was, this guy was hitting us. Uh, oh, never mind. I thought he had a halberd, uh, but he didn't. He just had a war axe. Uh, but anyway, I, I looked at, I saw the graphic wrong. I thought he was reaching and hitting us, so I had to move in. But no, we, when we moved in, he just bapped us with that axe. But this is a great day. So we're going to pick up this war axe. So now we have a war axe. All right, let me show you this. We are super excited about this, and this is why. If I push Q you'll see that the base accuracy on the war axe is zero, which is not great, but the base damage is 11, okay? And then let me look at my hand axe. So it's more accurate, but its base damage is only seven, and it's slightly faster, but not much. And so the war axe is a huge upgrade for us because it just does more base damage, which is what we want. So I'm gonna equip the war axe, okay? Uh, and I'm going to just say wield war axe Q, and now we're wielding it, and you can see us holding this better axe. I'm going to actually uh, close the door by pushing Shift-C to close the door, and then pushing 5 to rest. Now we've got a war axe. Now if I wanted to, I can go push I, I can push Q for the war axe, I can push Adjust, and I'm going to adjust it to letter A. So now if I push the single quotes, I'm switching between my swing and my war axe, because I'm never going to use my hand axe again. As soon as we can find a better one-handed axe, in terms of more base damage, that's what we're going to be using. And we are, and we're rolling. Okay, so we've explored Dungeon 3. It's done. By the way, I was saying this is a um, diametrically opposed you know, little uh, religious vault. Uh, it's funny. So you've got Zin, who's like this extremely good god of you know self-righteousness and anti-undead, anti-evil. Uh, and then you have uh, the Ured temple which is necromancy undead uh you know <laughs> uh altar so these gods are like these altars really hate each other and they're in the room together make your choice 
the red pill or the blue pill. All right. So from here, uh, we're happy. And I'm actually going to just go like this. I'm going to push D to bring up the drop screen. And I'm going to drop my uh, hand axe. I'm going to drop the short sword. I'm going to drop the animal skin and the leather armor. I'm just pushing the corresponding keys that go with those. I'm also going to drop the ring of ice uh, and get rid of all that stuff and go down. Now, the ring of ice could be useful to switch to if I found an enemy that was like doing a bunch of frost damage to me. Like the endoplasm actually does, but it doesn't do enough for me to want to carry that. So um, I just don't want it. But if you were being more nuanced, you could definitely keep that to switch to in a situation where you knew no fire guy was going to come and hit you while you were vulnerable to fire. All right, so I'm fighting the iguana on the staircase. I just let him come to me. I was pushing S to pass time. Uh, we killed the iguana. We slashed it and we headbutted it and he's dead. And then we killed that. I'm going to rest. And it looks like we got some enemies coming. So there's two orcs that have just wandered onto the screen. Now these orcs are here, but they don't see us. They have question marks by them, which means like they're just walking around. The enemies just walk around, you know, move around on their own generally. And if they see you, they're going to come running at you and maybe shout to attract other guys. But these dudes don't see us. So I'm going to switch weapons. Now they both see me. And they've shouted. Uh, you can see right here in the description of the combat log, it says the orc shouts times two. That means both of them shouted. And so all the enemies in the area know that we're here, which is a bummer. But while these guys are far away, I'm going to just try to shoot my sling at them. And all right, so now this is the time. So once an enemy is one square away from you, you want to push the single quotes to switch to your axe, okay? Because you don't want them to be in melee when you have to switch weapons and i'm going to just push s wait for this guy to come here now the enemy has done a really smart thing so i was hoping that this guy would stay here so i could fight these guys one at a time and he would kind of block the others but the enemy ai is really smart he moved over here uh so that his buddy could get here and hit me as well that being said i don't care uh, because I have an axe and these are orcs which you can see they're gray they're easy for me I'm just gonna swing at this orc and I'm gonna swing at it again and now um, we're hitting both of these because we're cleaving with the axe okay so we killed all those guys they did hit us a little bit but not I'm not concerned a kobold is trying to add on um, it has stones and a, and a dagger uh, but it's not hard and oh um, he just drank a potion of Berserk. That is hard. So any enemy, if it goes Berserk, is a threat uh, for the most part. Like sometimes it's not a big deal, but for you want to be terrified of that. Uh, so in the lower right, you can see that he's got the angry Berserk symbol that we get on our character. And it says right here, the kobold drinks a potion and he went Berserk. So enemies can have potions on them uh, randomly. And they can use them if they want. If you kill them before they use it, of course, you have a chance of getting it. Uh, we won't get it now, but we don't need that anyway. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the steps right away. So the Berserk that that guy has will wear off. And he won't be able to do it again. But I am definitely not going to fight that dude while he's Berserk. It's just a huge disadvantage for me. Of course, I could go Berserk and fight him. But why take the chance? Just let him calm down and we'll come back. Ooh, okay. So there's some artifact ring mail over here, which actually could be interesting. Oh God. <laughs> and here's Sigmund. All right, so we're, Sigmund is right here. This is fun that we get to show you Sigmund. Sigmund is a notorious killer of early characters in Dungeon Crawl. He's just like, he's legendary for ending runs very quickly because he is, got an annoying set of abilities and he's quite strong so he's got a scythe all right that can hit for a bunch of damage he can also shoot fire at us and he can turn invisible uh all kinds of things that are really really disastrous by the way we just push x we go over to him and we push v and you can see he can cast invisibility he can confuse us he can shoot us with a magical dart and he can throw fire and we are um, within range for all of these abilities to happen. The Phantom is also here, which is a quite, it, it's an annoying enemy because it kind of like moves really quickly and can blink around. So what we're going to do is go up the steps. Um, oops, I had to push escape to get out of the, out of the examine screen and we go up the steps. Ah, 
But the Phantom has blinked us off of the steps. That's another annoying thing about the Phantom. Okay, so that's quite bad. So our st this can happen, okay? So the staircase, which we need for safety, has been taken from us because of the Phantom. And we don't have enough piety at the moment to use Trog's hand, which I would love to use to prevent us from being uh, confused by Sigmund. Now, uh, I don't know if we have to use this yet, but we'll see. If you get confused, another thing that a Potion of Curing can do, okay, can remove confusion. So it says right here, it will give you, it cures poison, but it also very notably, especially in this case, against orc wizards or against Sigmund, anybody who wants to confuse you, if you drink a potion of curing, you will not be confused anymore. Now, that doesn't prevent them from, of course, just confusing you with the next thing that they do, but at least it gets you out of it for that one instance. All right, so I don't... Seeing where Sigmund is and counting the squares, one, two, three, four, five... Um, one, two, three, four. We can't make it back to the steps before Sigmund does. Uh, so if even if we did get to the staircase, we would be within range of Sigmund and he could follow us up the steps. So that's kind of uh, upsetting. And going berserk right here is rather tenuous because Sigmund can go invisible and the Phantom can blink away. And then we would just be kind of hanging out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually try to... I don't have very much of this floor mapped out. I could race back to the stairwell. That's an option. Okay. I could also um, just stand here and try to fight the phantom. But what I'm going to actually do is try to make it back up here to this stairway. It's a little crazy because I don't know what's in between us, but I just want to get away from Sigmund. And I don't know if it's necessarily possible. But I'm also thinking that the Phantom is going to blink us around. And so maybe we can use that to our advantage or somewhat. So I'm going to move up. I'm going to move up. So what we have done is find an escape hatch in the ceiling, which is serendipitous because going all the way up to this staircase was going to be really miserable, especially considering how much unexplored terrain there was until we got there but i figured it was the lesser of the evils of just charging right at sigmund with uh, a phantom in play the phantom is really really complicating things because as you saw when it hits it has a random chance of blinking you okay so blink like we've talked about before is an uncontrolled teleport to a region within line of sight and the the uh Distance depends on the Phantom's uh, ability, so we can see right here, um, it says it can hit for 10 damage to blink together with the Defender if any damage is dealt. So if we don't get hit, like if we absorb it with our armor, then we won't be blinked. And that's kind of what we're praying for. Now, of course, like I said, I could just stand here. I could just go berserk and just annihilate the Phantom. But then, by the time Sigmund got to me, I would not be berserk and we'd have bigger problems so i need to move up here move up we see more enemies kobolds goblins coming on the screen which is the danger of going into unexplored territory with a uh, character in the game but we're running and so we run we run what we have to do now uh and this is kind of decent because these enemies are blocking sigmund a little bit uh, we want to get him out of line of sight, but we also want to make sure that the stairway does not get blocked. Uh, so I'm going to move up one, and then I'm going to go diagonally to this square and try to get to the stairwell, and hopefully nothing blocks it. All right, so I'm going to click here. There's a ring. That's exciting. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click here, and there is a scorpion. So there's all kinds of difficult enemies. And now what we just do is we're going to try to go up the steps, and we made it. So the escape hatch, uh, as I told you guys before, it's red. It's a one-way ticket. You see, I can't go back down, but I don't want to right now. That was a terrifying situation. Now we're surrounded by goblins, which luckily for us is not a 
problem because we have an axe and we're a minotaur and we could even go berserk if we wanted to but we don't all right so that was a very very difficult situation and a great example of how sometimes in this game uh, your only solution is to run but it's uh, not the best and I believe in the trunk they're even making kiting or running away more difficult because I think enemies can get free attacks on you while you're moving I, th that's something they're experimenting with but for right now um i was able to get away and and make it uh instead of having to just hunker in and pray that we killed sigmund before he confused us or went invisible or hit us with a bunch of fire or damage or got a crit with his scythe or something okay so um now it's like, all right, which staircase do I want to go down? I'm going to tell you what. I want to go down the staircase that we haven't found yet. So I'm going to push shift. Um, uh, I'm going to push shift X and I'm going to push shift down. And we're going to move around until we find a stairway that has an asterisk. This one. So we haven't actually been down this staircase yet. And again, we're swarmed by enemies, but these are easy enemies. I'm going to stay here on the staircase and just fight them. I'm cleaving them to bits with the axe. This is the power of the axe, uh, is that cleave ability. It's so handy. All right. And now we can just go about our business and explore. Now, Sigmund is down in this area, okay? And we are up here. Also, we know that there is the kobold that went berserk, but he's, which was actually right here, but he's not there anymore. So I'm going to take out this hound and... Uh, you see that, by the way, that hound was yellow, but I have no problem with this character with my war axe and my 23 strength going up to most yellow melee-based creatures and just wailing on them. If they have magic or something, then, you know, that's another game. But for now, I'm able to just kind of walk around. I mean, that was a situation where the slime just moved in and tried to hit us, and we just headbutted them and retaliated before we even had to attack. So how about that? Okay. All right, I'm going to go up the steps because um, I got a scroll of identify, and I'd like to identify this potion. It's potion of magic, and we can pretty much drop that. But we have it, humorously. Okay. I'm going to go back down this staircase. I'm going to kind of work from this as our new base. And there's this ring. I do want to get this, but there's a scorpion and maybe the phantom, and there's Sigmund. All right, so Sigmund is here. Ooh, there's an amulet. Wow, there's a bunch of good stuff over here. All right, so this is another situation where I'm going to switch over to my sling, and I'm just going to shoot this scorpion, and I'm going to bring him up with me. I don't mind fighting the scorpion, but I don't want to fight the scorpion and Sigmund. If I can avoid it, I'm going to switch back to my axe, and I'm going to uh, wait, wait, and I am just going to fight the scorpion right here on the stairwell. And we killed it, and then I'm going to go up. I like to fight stuff right on the stairway because I don't want to just stair dance it if I don't have to because it gets free attacks on you when you go up the steps. So I like to fight it on the stairway, and then if it's like, uh-oh, this is not going well, then I can strategically go up the steps. I still will take the hit, but I can avoid it if it's not necessary. And we got it. And let's go back down, and uh, let's see if we can pick up any of this without Sigma noticing. It's a ring of willpower, which is humongous. Uh, we're going to put that on right away. So the Ring of Willpower, if you'll notice now, um, I push Shift-5, you'll see that we just got a pip of Will Resistance. Will Resistance makes it less likely that we get confused, for example, uh, by Sigmund. Any kind of uh, hexes or charms, checks that go against our will are... Uh, we're better at them, given... Uh, having will resistance so that's tremendous this is unfortunately an amulet of magic regeneration which is borderline useless for this character but hey what can you do we're going to go over here and this guy wants to just fight us with his like stones or whatever that's fine oh here's sigmund okay and sigmund sees us i'm going to step back down here so now it's time to choose the best location to fight sigmund uh if he goes here he can see us we have two pips of piety, which means we can Trog's Hand, which we definitely will. So we're going to Trog's Hand uh, when Sigmund gets into range, and then just charge at him and go Berserk on him and pray. 
I'd like to fight him in this area right here, if possible. So I'm going to step down, actually. I'd like to fight him right here, if we can, because then if he goes invisible, there's not that many places he could go, and I could easily try to kill him. Uh, so we're just going to uh, wait. One. And let's see. I moved one tile, and so he's probably here. Uh, so I'm going to wait one more time, and then now he's here. And then I'm going to use my Trog's hand. And, yep, he was he was exactly where I thought, and now he's here. And so we are now, we have Trog's hand, and we're ready to go. And I'm going to start moving up to him. And now he can hit us right here. By the way, you can see Sigmund barely misses us. He can hit us because he has a side, so he's reaching to smack us with that. Uh, and we're going to go right here and uh he hit us with a size and you can see he did seven damage i mean it's no joke and we're gonna go berserk and i'm gonna hit him and we hit him he's almost dead and i'm gonna hit him and he's dead and we're gonna swing down and kill the goblin and now immediately before i do anything else i'm not going to loot the body i'm not i'm doing nothing i'm just running while i'm berserk to the staircase so i can go up the steps and i can rest rest get rid of my debuffs get to full health and then go back down so if anybody wants to add on i'm good now he didn't have anything unfortunately other than a scythe and a robe uh and this goblin however had a scroll which is we don't know what it is but that's cool so we just took out Sigmund. And that was uh, the power of picking your spots. We couldn't fight Sigmund reliably, safely. We probably would have won. I mean, there's a good chance we would have won in the previous situation, but the Phantom blinking us was just too much of an X factor if we want to try to survive. So I had to get away from that thing. We ran away. We were able to find an escape hatch. That won't happen most of the time. We would have just had to run dragging those goblins with us until we got to the stairway, but that was easier. Uh, and now we were able to fight him, use Trog's hand to our ability, and go berserk with him in a controlled space so that if he did go invisible, we would be able to just walk around and use control swing to try to smash him and find him. And he didn't, and we won. And that's tremendous. I'm going to go up the steps, and I have three unidentified scrolls. I'm going to figure out what these are. So we're on Dungeon 3. We've cleared this out. So let's read these. This is a scroll of noise, which is like a cursed scroll, effectively. There really aren't cursed items, just a negative scroll. A scroll of noise is uh, effectively always bad. It alerts enemies. You can use it if you want to try to bring enemies like to you. Uh, in certain situations, very, very niche situations where you want to pull them out of a space and you want to attract them, maybe, but most of the time it's just always a bad thing. Uh, and we found a scroll of summoning, so we, all of these guys, we just summon them. So if you see creatures that have a bl uh, purple sphere in the upper left, that means they are summoned creatures. And so generally what you want to do for in that you know, like case is try to find whoever summoned them and kill them. It doesn't always... Uh, dispel them instantly but it at least prevents them from making more okay and know that if you kill summon stuff you just get no experience so there's really no point in ever fighting it but because they have the green larger circle around them that means they're friendly and we will read this scroll and it's a blink scroll now the blink scroll is uh, my favorite scroll in the game uh acquirement is of course very good but blink is like Basically, an extra life is how I view it in this game. It's like a uh, ace up your sleeve. It's the best uh, escape item that you can have because it lets you instantly teleport to any square that you can see that you can travel to. So you can see I'm moving this around, and I could just like instantly blink over here because I can see it down here, and bam, I'm there. And this is the best way to get away from things it will save your life so often it's so easy to use teleport is a great way to escape as well but it takes uh, a turn to prime it and it takes some time for it to go off and then when it does go off you don't know where you're gonna go blink is a controlled blink it's amazing so now we have that identified so if we find it in the future we're gonna be going doing very well uh, we have no more scrolls left to identify 
and we're rocking and rolling. Everyone, this is a great place to end this episode. We uh, had to fight some tough battles there, and uh, we got a war axe. We learned how to map a ranged weapon uh, to our quick switch key. We learned how to uh, toggle auto pickup on and off, how to drop items, um, and we got to fight Sigmund. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you have an excellent evening today. I'll check you next time. Take care.